very basic issues that concern Sri Lankan people for many decades now. The Sri Lankan people's movement, the Janata Araglia, as we know it, started with the Galifes protest site and has of late been subjected to unprecedented clampdown by Sri Lankan authorities and Sri Lankan government. But as we have seen the Sri Lankan people's movement over the past many months, we are also witness to the fact that the Aragalia and their movement, though has been trying, has been a test of both nerves and persist, uh, persistence, but the Araglia lacks none. Today, we are witness to hundreds of people having lost their lives in the Sri Lankan people's struggle. Their struggle for equal access to basic resources in society, which have increasingly been hoarded by both the local capitalists and the foreign elite and their nexus along with the parliamentarian and ruling elite of Sri Lanka. In the past few months, the Sri Lankan people, be it the ouster of the then president, Gotabaya Rajpaksa, as well as the ouster of Ranil Vikram Singhe, people's struggle in Sri Lanka stands strong. Today, not just in India, the laboring masses all over the world seek to offer their solidarity in support of the people's struggle in Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan people have been struggling for access to basic commodities like cooking oil, fuel, medicines and what not. And at the same time, we have seen the authorities hoarding limitless amounts of money and credit and capital. And this is the contradiction that we have been witness to both in Sri Lanka and in India and many other countries like Greece, Libya, Syria and so on. Friends, today the scenario that we have seen in Sri Lanka is a revolutionary moment. A moment where people's power, the power that the people, the laboring people, the working people of any country, of any community possess, has come out strong. And we need to ensure that the struggle reaches its desired end. And for that, as has been amply illustrated by both the struggle of the Sri Lankan people as well as regular contributors to the issue like Dr. Maya John who we are very grateful to have today as our guest speaker for today's public meeting. She has been a regular contributor to various issues concerning the people all over the world and the left movement and the labor movement, along with the Sri Lankan movement. Dr. Maya John is a professor of history at Jesus and Mary College, and she was the first woman president of St. Stephen's College of Delhi University, and one of the first forerunners, the first pioneers, on, who crusaded around the issues of rent regulation and hostels for women. Around the many write-ups that she has regularly contributed on the Sri Lankan struggle, one of the most powerful ideas is that people are the real constituents of power. And today, what is needed in Sri Lanka is that the revolutionary moment be captured by the collective strength of the people from all corners and 
the people's power be not allowed to rotate back to the same parliamentary system which exists and pretends to represent the people but at its heart is merely a representation of the local and foreign capitalist elite while the majority of the people in sri lanka have been forced to die in the serpentine queues for access to basic commodities while raising their voice against repression while raising their voice to demand their basic rights the small minority of parliamentarians the small minority of local and foreign ruling elite continues to mock the people's demands the people's power the people's movement and today we have organized this public meeting in support of the people's struggle in sri lanka of late we have witnessed the recently illegitimately elected ranil vikram singh government trying to repeatedly oust the protesters from protesting sites trying to clamp down on the protesters and students throughout the country and repeatedly trying to silence dissent to silence democracy from here we would once again raise the fact that history has often made us witness and continues to in the struggle of people from sri lanka from libya from greece from egypt from india and so on that people are not passive elements people are active members of a democracy and people will continue to struggle till the point where the real power in any community in any society in any country will eventually be ensured that it rests in the hands of the same people and not just a ruling clique with this we'd like to once again raise the slogan that people united shall always be victorious from here some of us might have uh, been acquainted with the song with the resistance song italian resistance song bella ciao which was sung by the women of northern italy during the time when they were forced to work on the rice fields majority of the women along with other men at substandard below dignity wages and it has been a song of resistance not just in italy but in many parts of the world so we begin today's public meeting with a song and we appeal to all of you to please join in the people united shall always be victorious the people united shall always be victorious sri lankan people movement long live long live long live the people united long live long live long live